In this video, we're going to explore some of the properties of the dynamic subject line shape. In CASA XPS, the dynamic subject line shape is introduced into a component using the string ds open bracket and then a pair of parameters separated by a comma and then close bracket. And the two values represent the parameters alpha and n as shown here. Well, alpha represents the asymmetry parameter within the dynamic subject profile and n represents the width of a Gaussian that is convoluted with the dynamic subject profile. The first observation we'll make about the dynamic subject profile as defined in CASA XBS is that when alpha is equal to zero, the line shape is a Voigt function. And this is because if alpha is zero, this first term is one upon one plus x squared square rooted, whereas the second term, when alpha is equal to zero, reduces to cosine of arctan x, which in turn is 1 upon 1 plus x squared square rooted. So when you multiply these terms together, you end up with a Lorentzian, and since we're convoluting with a Gaussian, this is a Voigt function. When we vary alpha away from zero, we end up with a sequence of curves that are characterized by the line shape moving away from the energy axis. And this might be very useful when you want to model data such as the asymmetry that we see in this carbon 1s from graphite. However, in terms of peak area, this is not so good. The problem is that when we want to calculate a peak area from a region or a Voigt function, there's an interval that is specified over which we do the integration. And so the integral of the signal above background will give a value However, if we integrate over the same interval these line shapes, then the area that we determine from the different line shapes will vary as a function of this asymmetry parameter. This means that there is no systematic way of calculating the intensity of this carbon 1s graphitic peak when we want to compare it against these satellite peaks. And this extends further that if we wanted to compare the carbon 1s against an oxygen 1s that is characterized by Voigt functions, then once again we would not be able to measure the amount of oxygen versus the amount of carbon in a graphitic form if we were modeling the carbon using a DS line shape. If we consider a sample that includes both oxygen and carbon from a graphitic-like material, then we can illustrate some of these points relating to the Dunyak subject line shape. Here we have a carbon 1s that is modeled using a Dunyak subject and then Voigt functions for carbon bonded to oxygen and these satellite peaks. In addition, we've got an oxygen 1s, and this is modeled using Voigt functions. So we would like to relate the intensity from these oxygen peaks to the intensity from these components modeling the carbon 1s. However, it's clear when you look at the wider image of this model that the Dunyak subject line shape forces a Tugar background that would otherwise meet the data to be offset from the data itself. And this feature of the Dynex Sunjic line shape, when you consider both of these peaks together, means that you also have some contribution of the Dynex Sunjic line shape even as far away as this oxygen 1s peak. So we have a significant energy difference between these peaks and yet we still have a contribution from a line shape that is defined using a Dynex Sunjic. So in terms of measuring area, it's now understandable why this peak area is ill-defined and cannot be used to quantify the graphitic carbon against the amount of carbon bonded to oxygen.